Imagine this scary scene. A car is trapped under a semi-trailer and firefighters are working to get the victim out safely. This time it's all part of a Ben Fire and Rescue training exercise. Take a look. Ben Fire Department is an all-risk, all-hazard organization. We try and prepare for all types of emergencies. Highway 97 is a fairly major transportation corridor and so we like to be prepared for any type of motor vehicle accident that uh, could come our way and, and certainly a car underneath a uh, truck trailer is one of those types of accidents that don't, doesn't happen very often but we do like to be trained to be able to handle that type of incident. Uh, we try to make our training real so that when we actually get out on the roadways like they did this morning before our training started it allows us to have a high level of uh, readiness and when we get out there we don't want to have to think about everything we're doing every time and if we can make the training real here at the training grounds it allows us to speed up the process a little bit to be able to remove patients safely and more efficiently on the roadways. As we try and wean ourselves off of foreign oil we've seen car construction change over the last 20 years dramatically and there's a lot more emphasis now on using high strength alloy metals in cars to keep the car lighter and get more efficient fuel mileage. Those high strength alloys pose a significant problem to us as far as our ability to cut through them utilizing the jaws of life or the extrication tools. We've really ramped up our training over the last few years trying to get that accomplished, added some new equipment, um, you know, because we're in a really time compressive environment, especially in the cold like it is today, where we need to get these people out of the vehicles and into the hospital where they have a much higher probability of having a good outcome or a more positive outcome. We also have seen different types of propulsion for the vehicles come into play, especially with hybrid vehicles here in Central Oregon. So you combine those two things and it, it makes it so we have to train with a much higher level of awareness to deal with the types of uh, systems that they're putting into cars now. We try and train our crews to the level of being able to perform at the most difficult uh, situation that they may encounter. Uh, not only because we may encounter that situation, but it also makes things much easier for us on situations that are not quite as intensive. So in this type of operation where it's very manpower intensive and they're dealing with a very, very advanced evolution, it makes it go that much smoother on situations that aren't that, um, don't require that much work. The value of the debrief is um, it allows us to be critical of what we did in the training session. Um, and it allows everybody that was involved to know what everybody else was doing because we have certain people in charge of patient care and then we have other people that are in charge of other aspects of the rescue. So it allows us to continue to um, move through the learning process and to get more efficient and to learn from our mistakes that we may make during training.